The opening ceremony is just one day away. Joining us now is someone who knows all about the pressure <laughs> and anticipation of this huge event, Lolo Jones, three-time Olympian and author of the new book, Over It. Also, one of the very few people who's competed in both the winter and summer games in bobsledding <laughs> and hurdling for Team USA. Very cool. And if that wasn't all enough, she's also co-hosting a daily show on Peacock owned by our parent company, NBC Universal. It's called On Her Turf, and it will highlight the living legends and rising stars of women's sports at the Tokyo Games. We can't wait to see that. Lola, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's an honor to get to talk to you as somebody who has done this before quite a few times. I mean, you know kind of what this is like. The athletes heading into opening ceremonies, it's something that they've worked for their whole lives this particular year, they had to wait a year longer than they were supposed to have to. What do you think is going through their heads right now as the Olympics get underway? I think that they're just ready to compete. I mean, four years is a long time to wait, but five years, <laughs> four-year competition is <laughs> extremely long. Um, you know, they, the, the difference in this Olympics in years past is they're dealing with very strict COVID protocols. Uh, so the vets returning to the Olympics, uh, it's going to take longer to get into the Olympic village. It's going to be longer to process. Then you have the no fans that there's, it's going to be absolutely silent as they compete. And then they're not going to have friends and family to be there for them to cheer them on or comfort them after they compete or to celebrate their wins with them. So they're dealing with a lot of different things that a normal Olympics, um, but some of them had have had seasons, mm -hmm. like a half season, a partial season, preparing for this. Right. Lolo, I want to talk about your book. You write about a challenging childhood raised by a single mother, father who was in prison, moving around a lot. Talk to us a little bit about how that shaped you as an athlete and as a person. Well, I'll just give you one example. We were so poor, like we couldn't even afford a car. So I hated it. We had to, I had to literally walk or run everywhere. And I was just like, geez, like, I wish my family was just like, uh, you know, had enough money so we could get a car. Well, little did I know all those walks and those, and I got so tired of walking. I would just run because it'd be quicker to get to school that turned into like a base for me becoming a runner. And that's how I went on to get a scholarship at LSU and then become an Olympic athlete. So, uh, sometimes the things we don't like are actually blessings in disguise. Mm, what a great message. And that of course is how many Americans know you in the track and field arena as a hurdling start, the 2008 and 2012 summer games. But then in 2014, you also participated in the Winter Games as part of the bobsledding team. First, K, hello. Wow. How cool is that? <laughs> but now, and you're also prepping for the 2022 Games in Beijing. Talk to us just about kind of how you make that switch, how you prepare, and also how you're feeling with those games now just over six months away. I know I'm currently in the Olympic training center in Lake Placid, New York. And it's so weird because the Olympics are back to back. Uh, they're, yeah. you know, six months summer games. And that's why I had to really decide which Olympics I wanted to compete in because I have to gain 30 pounds for bobsled. So there was mm. no way I could do track and field and then do bobsled at the same time. Uh, so wow. it was fun gaining the weight for a little bit, but then it got very difficult. <laughs> so that's the difference. I basically just have to put a lot of power on and uh, for track and field, I need to be faster. So it's just kind of morphing my body from a linebacker, like a wide <laughs> receiver for track to a line linebacker oh for bobsled. That is so <laughs> impressive and crazy that, that you even can right. do that. And having to do that in six months, you're right, would have been incredibly, <laughs> incredibly difficult. Well, we also want to ask you about the show you're hosting on Peacock, which is, of course, part of our family here. What can you tell us about that? I'm so excited. I don't know if people know, but over 50% of the medals that will be won at the Olympics Games will be done by female athletes. Mm. So is willing to give them a spotlight, show the stories of, you know, obviously the, the greats like Simone Biles, Allison Felix, but we also want to tell those unknown stories, the athletes that you don't really know much about, the sports that you don't know much about. There's a whole new wave of new sports. We have surfing, climbing, skateboarding. So we're just going to really put a highlight on some of those things, get you acquainted with some new things. Well, that is so incredible. And we are just, I mean, it's an honor to have you on the show. We're so impressed by you. And we can't wait to watch your new show yeah, and no read kidding. your book. And, and just follow everything you're doing. And right watch now. you goodness. in the winter I'm games. I'm exhausted my God. just listening to you right All my now, time so. will be spent consuming <laughs> Lolo content on some level. <laughs> Thank you, Lolo. Appreciate it. Thank you so Thank you much. <laughs> hey, NBC News viewers. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.